This is the new Honda Civic. And in this review, we're telling you 10 things that you need to know about this car. But first, this video is supported by Vitality Insurance. Get 25% cash back every month when you drive well. Look in our description below to find out more. And go to whatcar.com for a great deal on your next car. This is the 11th generation Honda Civic. It's a car name that stretches back to the 70s. But while the name is old, this new model is cutting edge with a new hybrid setup and a raft of changes over the previous model, including a new look, a new interior to go with the new engine that it has as well. And to be honest, the previous Civic was a bit off the pace compared to the other cars in this class. But with all these new changes, this promises to be a big step forwards. If you're looking at the new Civic, then you are spoilt for choice when it comes to alternatives, because this family hatchback is up against other rivals like the Ford Focus, the VW Golf, the Seat Leon, the Skoda Octavia, the Toyota Corolla, even the BMW 1 Series and the Mazda 3, and many, many more. So that's a lot of very good options in this class. Does the Civic stand out compared to them? Well, it certainly has a very good interior. You sit quite low in here, so it gives you a kind of sporty feel. These seats are really comfortable as well, and you get electrical lumbar adjustment as standard. One slightly annoying thing, though, is that if you want to adjust the angle of the backrest, you have a lever to do so, which just means it's a bit more fiddly and difficult to fine tune your position compared to most other rivals that have a wheel to do the same thing but that's a very small point. Where the Civic does have an advantage over quite a lot of other rivals is here with these physical controls for the air conditioning. So this is very simple to adjust while you're driving, not like the Leon, the Golf, the Octavia, which all have a fiddly touchscreen setup instead, which isn't anywhere near as good. You have an excellent driving position all round, really, in the Civic with a good view out the front. And yes, at the back, the boot does stick out quite far compared to other rivals. So that means that the rear windscreen is at quite a steep angle and fairly narrow to see out of, but it's not that bad. And you get front and rear parking sensors and a reversing camera as standard to help with all round visibility. You also have a nine inch fully digital driver's display on range topping advanced models. If you go for the lower trims, you have the setup that we have here, which is the seven inch driver display with an analog speedo, which is very good, clear, easy to see, and quite difficult to put the steering wheel in a position that blocks any of it, to be honest, which is another bonus. Every Civic has a nine inch touchscreen infotainment system, and it's not the best around. You'll still find a one series and a Mazda 3 easier to use, mostly because they have a rotary dial down here to help operate it while you're driving especially. This isn't the most user-friendly layout, but it's still responsive, it's bright, and you've got some helpful shortcut buttons here to help jump between a few of the different functions as well. Overall quality in here is very impressive. It's not as plush ultimately as a 1 Series or a Mazda 3, but it's got some really nice touches like this honeycomb effect on, up on the dashboard. All these dials and switches and toggles feel pretty good quality. Yes, there are some cheaper feeling plastics lower down, but there's also a lot of soft touch materials around as well. So this might not be the single greatest family car interior out there, but all in all, it is very impressive indeed. Is this a practical car? Well, in the back, legroom is very, very good indeed. There's loads of it and there's some a little bit of space under the seat in front for your feet as well. The problem is though, that because you've got that sloping roof line on the outside, inside, it means that headroom back here really isn't that great. So I can't sit up straight without my head touching the roof here. So if you're six foot, you won't be able to sit up straight back here comfortably. And that is a shame because there's lots of other cars in this class that are very good for legroom and headroom as well. So ultimately, if you're gonna have tall people in the back here regularly, then something like a Leon or a Focus are gonna serve you better. But the boot is pretty good compared to its rivals. In total, you'll be able to get six of these carry-on size suitcases in the boot below this slightly odd parcel shelf, which is the same number of suitcases that you get in the back of the pretty practical Seat Leon. Another couple of helpful additions in the boot include the 12 volt socket up there. There's some hooks at the back as well. The only downside really back here is the fact that you've got quite a big loading lip at the front, which might mean it's slightly more difficult loading heavy things into the back and taking them out again than it is on some other rivals. 
So on the whole, this is a practical car and it's good to drive as well. It's got direct, accurate steering that's quite responsive as well. And it's not quite as agile as a Focus, but this is still a really nice car to drive. It's also comfortable, so it is quite firm, but ultimately feels more settled and slightly calmer than an equivalent Seat Leon as well. But the thing that does really stand out for the Civic on the road is this engine. So it's a two litre petrol hybrid. It's not a plug-in hybrid, it's just a regular hybrid. And it has 181 brake horsepower, which is enough to give it 0 to 62 miles per hour in a pretty quick 6.8 seconds. And it certainly does feel like a fairly quick family car as well. And it's just a really, really good hybrid setup. It's refined, it's quiet, it's punchy and smooth, and it's certainly quick enough for the kinds of driving that you're gonna to need to do in this car. Now, if you've driven a Honda HRV, that also has a similar hybrid setup, but that's Honda's old tech. This is the latest hybrid tech from Honda, and it's a huge step forwards from the HRV because the HRV feels fairly slow, it's incredibly loud. That certainly isn't the case with the Civic, which overall is just a really good thing to drive. One of the most impressive things about this engine is the efficiency that it offers. So we put it through our true MPG test and it recorded a result of 49.9 miles per gallon. And just to be clear, that is what you will be able to achieve in real world driving conditions. It's not some optimistic figure that you'll never actually see on your trip computer. For some context, we also put a 1.5 litre mild hybrid Seat Leon through our true MPG test and that recorded a result of 40.2 miles per gallon. So this is impressively efficient. To be honest, it's a good thing that your fuel bills are likely to be low in the Civic because this is quite an expensive car to buy outright. In terms of its list price, this is definitely towards the more expensive end of the class. But the good news is that the resale values should be very, very strong in the Civic. And that means that there are quite competitive monthly PCP finance deals around as well. Anyway, the best thing about the Honda Civic is the hybrid setup in general. It's powerful, it's quiet, and it delivers very good real world fuel economy. The worst thing is probably the rear headroom because of this sloping roof line here. But remember, that's only likely to be a problem if you're gonna be carrying tall passengers in the back. To be honest, the new Civic is pretty hard to fault. It's great to drive, it's practical, it's cheap to run. Right now, this is the best family car that you can buy. For more information, go to whatcar.com where you can also get a great deal on your next car. But before you go, subscribe to our channel to see lots more car reviews like this and tell us in the comments below what you think of the new Civic.